Hey, what is going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel and I hope you're having a good morning. In today's video, I would like to go over a very common task that a lot of iOS developers have to deal with from time to time. And that's the idea of creating some kind of a text view or text field component that knows how to auto size itself based on how much text is inside of that component. So I would like to start off with a demo of what this looks like, and then we'll move on to the implementation inside of Xcode. All right, so I have on my screen the iPhone 10 simulator, and I've launched the app for our Instagram Firebase course. And let me click into the comment section for each one of these individual posts, right? So this little area down here allows us to type in as much text, see text as we want, and see, and it'll keep on word wrapping depending, see, depending on how much text is inside of this guy. All right, so there are a lot of techniques to actually implementing this auto sizing text view. And the one we're using inside of this course is actually very different and it's actually a little bit harder to understand. So what I want to do in today's video is to show you a much easier version of this auto text size, it's the auto sizing text view thing. So up here is a text view component. See, and, see, and this allows us to word, the word wrap as we type inside of this text view. So this is way easier to understand, and I wanna show you guys how to do this right now inside of Xcode. All right, so let's get started with a brand new single view application inside of Xcode over here. And let me just run this app to make sure that we get a white screen for this view controller, kind of like what we're seeing over here. So really good start there. And the first task we have to kind of accomplish is to create a text view inside of this view did load function, and you know, start typing text inside of it. So how do we do that? Well, we'll just create a text view reference over here as a UI text view, use an empty constructor, and I'm going to do something called setting a frame on this text view. And I will use a CG rect over here and let's see, I'm going to construct it with X, Y, width, and height. And let's just use 0, 0 for the top left corner. And the width, I'll give it perhaps 200 and a height of 100. All right, so the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to add it into the view controller's entire view with add sub view of this text view. And I'm going to run my app here. And if you don't set the frame on this text view, you're not going to see it because inside of the two dimensional world, you actually need an X, Y origin and also a width and a height in order for the graphics engine to render it. Right. So really good stuff there. And you notice how we don't really see the text view inside of here. But if you click on here and you hit command K, you should be able to see that you can type somewhere up at the very top corner. So in order to make this easier to visualize, why don't we set the background color of this text view to something like dot light gray. I think that should work for me. And uh, once we run this, you'll see the actual background color kind of coming through inside of your app. And that's going to look like this over here, right? So you can keep typing there and I'll just keep on word wrapping like that. And if you get to the very end, it actually doesn't do what you would want, it kind of just scrolls up and down like that. So that's how we start off our application. And what we really want to do is instead of providing a frame like this, we would like to uh, use auto layout to anchor this text view into the screen so that's easier to deal with. So what I'm going to do now is to see use auto layout to set my text view uh, frame, kind of, all right? So how does auto layout work? Well, first you have to say text view dot translates auto resizing mass into constraints equals to false, which enables auto layout. And the next thing is I'm going to place it on the, let's see the top safe area guide over here, the leading anchor on the left side, the trailing anchor on the right side. And then I'm just going to give it a constant static height of maybe 50 or hundred. So let's see how that works by creating these four anchors inside of an array, kind of like this. And I'll show you why I'm doing this, all right? So text view dot top anchor. Let's constrain it to the top of the screen. So constraint equal to some kind of anchor. And this is going to be the entire view controller's views, top anchor like that, right? 
So to make this a little bit prettier, you want to use the safe area layout guide instead and just call top anchor and hit a comma to specify the second anchor inside of your array. So text view dot leading anchor, which is the left side. Constrain this to something as well, which will be the views leading anchor, comma text, see text view dot trailing anchor and constrain this to the views trailing anchor like that. And then one more comma, we can say text view dot height anchor. And this last one is going to be a little bit different. I'll use constraint equal to constant of 50 to give it a height of 50. All right, so if you run this right now, you're gonna run into a lot of different bugs. And the first one is you have to actually add your view into this entire view controller before you start doing these anchoring methods. So let's put that up there. And the next thing is that you actually have to activate all of these constraints. So there's a lot of different ways of doing that. I'm going to use a for each loop like this. And let me just backspace backspace and use brace brace. Instead of here, dollar sign zero dot is active equals to true. All right. Now you can run your app and your text view is going to be placed on the leading left side, the top safe area, the trailing right side, and have a height of 50 looking like that. So really good job there. And the reason why we use auto layout is because if you, you know, flip your screen over, right, it will render itself correctly based on how you've laid out your anchors. So that's a really, really good way of accomplishing the layout for your app so that you don't have to, you know, constantly calculate frames, which is a bit annoying if you're maintaining code, that's kind of ugly. All right, so now that we have our text view correctly being rendered out inside of our view controller over here, I'm going to modify the font size of our text just so I can perform the word wrapping a little bit easier. So let's just do that down here somewhere with text view of dot font equal UI font dot something. So for today's video, I'm going to use something called preferred font for text style. And for this text style, you can use something called headline, which is going to give you a really, really large font size. I'm not exactly sure how big it actually is, but I think it's somewhere between 18 to 22. So let's see, see how big this font is and just type in that and you notice kind of what's happening over here, the text view is not auto sizing itself, right? So let's see how we actually fix this issue. Well, the first thing we actually have to do is to say text view dot delegate equals to itself. And the reason why I'm doing this is to kind of figure out when the text inside of the text view actually changes, All right? So you can't really do this just yet because self, which is this view controller class doesn't conform to the protocol of UI text view delegate. Now you can conform to it over here or you can just add an extension down at the very bottom. So let me show you how to do that with extension of this view controller class and conform to it over here with UI text view delegate and just close it off like so. Now, the reason why you would use an extension is because if you follow protocol-oriented programming, it makes your code cleaner so you don't have all these methods inside of your main view controller class. So that's kind of how that works. And now that you have that delegate being conformed to, you can say text view did change like that. All right, so print, I don't know, text view dot text. That seems to make sense to me. And now every time I start typing text inside of this text view, you're going to have the text being printed out at the very bottom. So ABC and you see ABC down in the console below. All right, so the next trick that I want to show you how to perform here is to resize the text view according to the text inside of it, right? So the way to do this is to kind of understand how text views work. And there's a method on here called size that fits CG size. All right, so you have to pass in a parameter inside of here. And what's going to be returned is the sort of estimated size of the text view that is able to kind of fit all the text inside of it. All right, so this guy, so let estimated size equals that. And this guy, this parameter over here, what do we need to pass in? Well, let me construct it 
right above with a CG size class constructor. And let me use the width and height. Okay. So for the width, I actually need to use the entire view controller's width because that's the width of this entire component. So let's just use view.frame.width and this view refers to the view of the view controller, okay? And the height, you can just use any very large arbitrary height. So the best kind of option here is to use infinity like that. And then this size, you pass it in over here. And then this estimated size will kind of give you the proper size for what you need inside of the text view to auto size itself. So the last thing you need to do is to say text view and you need to change the height of it somehow, right? Well, we established the height anchor with a constant of 50 up here. So this text view, we need to somehow access something called the height anchor thing, right? Well, you can't really access this height anchor by doing this. You actually have to kind of loop through all of its constraints that's been set up up here. And I'm going to do it very quickly over here by showing you how to do that with textView.constraints. And this is an array of these four constraints that you set up, right? So I'm going to check for an attribute by first iterating through all these constraints like that. And you have those four constraints. I'm just going to call all of those items a constraint and say if constraint dot first attribute, it's for the first attribute equals equals dot height. Then I know that I'm accessing the height constraint that I set up earlier. And you can finally say height or constraint dot constant. And previously we set it to 50. That's what this constant value is referring to. And you can go ahead and set it to whatever the heck you want. And let's just use 100 to illustrate what this is going to do every time my text view changes its text. So going up here, we can say, you know, FAD, and you see that it automatically jumped to a much larger height of 100. So the thing you would now have to do is to plug an estimated size dot height to modify the text view's height. And that's going to be based on the estimated calculation of size that fits. And the system's going to figure out how tall this box needs to be, or this frame rather. So here we are, and this is kind of auto sizing right now, right? So that looks okay, but you see there is this error where, you know, part of the text is hiding kind of like that. So let me see if I can show you better as to what's happening. So that's pretty ugly. And the problem here is that there's this property on text view called scroll enabled that allows the text to be scrolled up and down and also sideways. If you disable that feature of text view, so text view dot scroll enabled equals to false, that's going to allow your text view to not be scrunched up at the very top there. And that should hopefully finish the feature off. So here we finally have something that looks much better and it knows scrunching. I think that's the word scrunching up at up at the top with our text. All right, so really good stuff. And this is basically the idea of, you know, implementing auto sizing. Uh, the last thing I want to mention is that let's say your text view has some text to begin with, right? So as you kind of saw, it started off as a blank text view. So they say text view dot text. Let's give it some default text. So here is some default text that we want to show and it might be a couple of lines that are word wrapped right and if you run your application now uh, what's going to happen is the text view will start off with a bunch of text but because we're not really calling the text view change method you notice how you don't really see the entirety of the text so if you click on there and you start typing right all that uh, the remaining text just magically appears. So the easy fix for this, I believe, is to simply call this method down here, text view did change. So when you're inside of this view controller, you can call these extension methods for your extension class. So you can say text view did, did change. This is going to call this method 
down below, you need to pass in some kind of text view. And that's just going to be that over there. And you can run your code now. And uh, hopefully, at the very beginning of your app, when you set that very long line of text, it goes through the calculation of text view did change once. And then uh, when the rendering engine kind of works, uh, you can see that the frame is automatically calculated to fit the text inside of it. So if we keep, so keep typing, notice how the text continues, it continues to wrap. So pretty awesome, right? All right, so that's basically the idea behind implementing this type of feature. And the thing you might be wondering is what happens if I actually put this text view all the way at the bottom of the screen? Does this actually work? Well, the way I'm going to show you how this works is by first dismissing the keyboard with Command K, like that. Keyboard goes away, right? And I'm going to modify these constraints over here. And instead of using the top anchor all the way up at the top, I'm going to anchor it at the bottom over here instead. So the text view's bottom will be at the view controller's safe area bottom guide. So let's change the text view's top anchor to bottom anchor like that. And change the bottom, see the top anchor to bottom like so. And now you can run your application. So basically, we've flipped the top to the bottom. And once you do that, you'll see how the rendering changes. And it kind of looks like that over there. So the text view is now clamped to the bottom. And the moment that you try to type text inside of here, it looks okay, but on a real device, you'll have your keyboard kind of push itself up like that by hitting Command K. And notice how the text view doesn't actually follow the keyboard, right? And the thing that you really want to have happen is what we have inside of our Instagram course. And this over here actually uses something called an input accessory view. See, so I've lost uh, ability to type in here, but this guy allows the text view over here to follow the keyboard wherever it is, kind of like that. And if you slide it all the way down, it dismisses the keyboard. So this is the nice thing about an input accessory view, and it's a little difficult to implement. If you are interested in finding out how to actually do it, I highly recommend that you check out the Instagram Firebase course. And on lesson 48, uh, I feel like there's a lot of lessons inside of this course, I show you exactly how to kind of refactor your code to implement a text view that has this ability to be tracked by the keyboard. And the other thing that's nice about it is that when you kind of, let's see, if I hit the submit, you'll see that you'll have this placeholder that says enter comment. And uh, that's also another feature that I show you how to do. All right, that's going to be it for me today. If you are interested in downloading the source code for today's project, make sure to find the link in the description below. And also, if you like today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. If you have any questions, make sure to hit me up on Twitter at build that app, and I'll try to answer the questions as they come in. Uh, that's going to be it for me today. I'll see you in the very next video. Bye bye.